Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today we are finally building the Octominer rig. Let's start in the beginning and go over the parts. The two items from Octominer are the motherboard as well as the server style case. We also got our basics like RAM and the Endo 2 derived from them and I have a tutorial how to install those in my initial review video which you can check out in the top right corner so that this video does not get too long. For cards, we are going for a mixed NVIDIA rig and the wild mishmash of different manufacturers is a good representation of the GPU market of the previous month in my opinion. We have cards ranging from 1080s, a 1070 Ti, different style of 1060s or 6GB down to a small 1050 Ti. Lastly, in terms of power supplies, I'm a big fan of HP server style solutions together with breakout boards. In my crypto mining mail video, I already realized that my ASUS cards were too big for the Octo case. So before installing anything, a case mod was in order. I sculpted these Thermaltake fans cheaply from eBay. So the first thing I did was modding the fans with an ordinary fan controller, which you can see here. So we have four modded fans in the front as intake and the three original hefty Delta fans as exhaust on the back. Here's just a little spoiler again how awesome this looks. With the case mod done, I'm now installing the case connectors before putting the board in so that I can see what I'm doing. Also, I had to take the M.2 out again to see the plan of the case header on the board because it's beneath the hard drive. That is one lesson in mining. Sometimes you have to redo stuff over and over again. You see this with me, especially with cable management because I like my things neat. While I'm installing the board, I have to tell you why this video is called part one. Guess what? One package was late, so the only thing missing for the build is a bigger breakout board, which should already have been delivered. That's sad, but that gives us the chance to do more testing. So for today, we can only build with four cards, making it an ultra low power rig. That's the reason why we'll be using a 750 watt power supply for now, exchanging it with a 1200 watt one later. Also no worries, the other cards won't sit idle. They are stressing my two workstations at the moment and hashing away in the meantime. So the Octominer board has a lot of 6-pin sockets, but for running the board itself, we only need to plug the first two in. The others are only needed if you plug in cards that do not need additional power. You will see that in part 2, because the 1050 Ti we'll be installing does not need external power. Also, I'm building this rig in an upright position, because in terms of space in my farm is much easier for me. Here you can see me cabling up more basics. We have one 6-pin to Modex connector for our fans, and everything else is 6-pin only. The last thing to do hardware wise is to install our four cards. You might argue that I could use the space and divide them further for now, but I want to know how hot they will get close together. The MSI Armor 1080 gets the hottest from my experience, so it's at the bottom now. Also, Windows and Nvidia like it um, when you install cards one by one and restart each time, but nobody got time for that, so we're installing them all at once and this only means we will have to restart more often later until everything is recognized. I can only state it's a joy to build in here because you can work as clean as you want and you can hide a lot of cables on the inner case wall as well as between the fence. A piece of advice I can already give you is, especially when using server PSUs, is to find a way to isolate the power supply space a bit better. Because for me, the card closest to the power supply got 10 degrees hotter than the exact same card one slot below. For this kind of things, I love these anti-static rubber mats you can get in your local hardware store. They are good against vibrations, which I got to experience in my farm, as well as isolating the space a bit more. After putting it under the power supply, the temperatures were fine again, and I could basically see no difference between the top two cards. So what's left to do? You'll need an old school VGA cable if you don't want to fiddle through the fan holes in order to plug one card in, and I'm glad that I had one lying around. Now, you only need to install the software of your choice. People with SMOS or HiveOS have it easier, but I already mentioned in previous videos that I'm an old school Windows guy, especially since most of my rigs have been mixed AMD and NVIDIA mixed mining freaks in the past. The Windows install was surprisingly fast on the board with the MSATA and it's been running more than stable. After that, it's only drivers and benchmarking. So I like to have my NVIDIA cards on Nexus from time to time, giving me about 480 mega hashes per second with this four card setup. But of course with NVIDIA cards, you'll be interested in Equihash hash rates too. We are getting almost 1500 souls with modest overclocks and stable temperatures. 
I included both DSDM and EWBF minor benchmarks and even without the exhaust fans the cards would stay below 70 degrees celsius for now. But of course this means the fans would run at 80 to 100 percent power all of the time which is not necessarily ideal for long term solutions. I like it lower. So now you can see the same things with the three exhaust deltas on. Hell are they loud because I'm building and testing in my office space but the fans of my L3 Plus in the basement are still louder when both machines are in the same room, so no problem for me. In the future I get a volume meter in order to give you more accurate info about different types of loudness with the machines, but with the exhaust we are staying below 60 degrees and interestingly, at least for Nexus, I could see even higher hash rates with the Delta fans on, if only 10 mega hashes. But the armor card was around the same temperature, which is strange and I'll look into that. All in all. Quite a fans as intake and the strong exhausts are a perfect setup for me. But no chance that the Octominer will stay in my office with the deltas on. So if you want to turn your Octorig into a living room heater, you might want to do more fan modding. So that's it for part 1 today. You can see how easy it is to build with Octominer. So the rig is done for now in an extreme low power setup and part 2 will then show you a full 8 card build as well as my honest experiences on stability. But for now I'm more than happy. If I left anything out or you want to know something in particular, please leave a comment below. If not, please share or subscribe if you like this video and want to continue to follow our mining journey. Thank you for tuning in again. Bye!